I moved to Singapore 15, maybe 16 months ago now. And coming to Singapore to set up a podcast studio, to set up a podcast media agency. And in the early days, I didn't know many people, but a good friend of mine, Stuart, came to the studio and we recorded a podcast together. And he said, let's go and have an authentic Singaporean experience after the podcast. I'll take you to a hawker center. Now, if you don't know, it's a very Singaporean or Southeast Asian institution. The Hawker Center is where you can go and eat many different kinds of foods for the region. And Singaporeans love their food. So what better to experience Singapore than through its food? Now, being new to Singapore, Stuart decided that he was going to take me to a beginner Hawker Center because Hawker Centers have different levels. They have the tourist Hawker Centers like Newton Hawker Center, or they have the more hardcore local hawker centers, which I've become more accustomed to as I've stayed here longer in Singapore. So we're there, Friday night, Newton Hawker Center. And because it's a beginner hawker center, and it's big, and it's clean, and it's busy, it's packed. We're looking for seats. There are no seats, but we find the last table, and we grab the seats. We chope it, chope being a Singaporean word to describe grabbing a seat. And there's a rule for this. You have to put something down like an umbrella or a pack of tissues and it's yours. You choke the seat, then you go off and you get your food. And you can choose from all these different stalls. So it takes a bit of time, but then you come back, you reconvene back at your table and then you get down to the serious business of eating. So we brought our food back to the table and then this couple came over and said, can we sit there? And we noticed there was two seats at our table. So I said, yeah, sure. I moved my bag and then they choked their seats and they went off. They went to get their food. They then came back. They sat at the table and we were chatting away. And then the man says, you know, you want some food? What do we got? So he started sharing some food. I remember it being chicken wings and being locals and Singaporeans. We're all talking about food. What are we eating? What's good here? And so on. And then he starts asking, what do you do? So my friend Stuart says, I create medical devices. So he rummages in his bag and pulls out this box. And inside the box, there's this pair of glasses, which is a special pair of glasses, which enables people with a special type of hearing loss to hear. So he's talking to this man and telling him that's what he does. He used to work for Dyson. Now he makes medical devices. The man then turns to me and says, what do you do? And I say, well, I came from Japan. I set up a studio in Singapore and I want to help Asia find its voice. He seemed quite interested in that. He's asking me more stories. What kind of podcast do I do? What do I talk about and why do I do it? So we had quite a deep conversation about podcasting, and he seemed really interested in podcasting. Then I turned around to him and said, what do you do? And he said, I own an airline. And that's how I met Tony Fernandez. Obviously, it was dark. I didn't realize it was Tony Fernandez, the CEO of AirAsia, sitting there next to me at Newton Hawker Center. But in fact, I think he actually enjoyed that. He enjoyed the fact that I didn't know who he was and we were just having a normal human conversation, just as anybody would to any stranger, just being nice, curious and finding out about what they do. And then when I found out what he really did, and he really didn't change, to be honest, the conversation went deep. We talked about where we both grew up. I found out that he went to school in my old hometown. We talked about living in England in the 70s and 80s. And we talked about his journey to get there. And we talked about everything in between. Football, life, food, travel. And actually, we didn't talk a lot about business. Which was good. Because we really, we talked about each other's stories. And then I said to him, well, I would love to do your podcast. I would love to record a podcast with you. And he said, yeah, sure, let's do it. And he gave me his WhatsApp number. And then the rest, as they say, is history. Well, it wasn't history. It actually took quite a bit of time. It took a bit of back and forth. You see, his office is in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and my office is in Singapore. And even though it's only one flight between and he actually owns an airline, he never actually stays in one place at one time. He's everywhere. At one point, we had the tickets booked to go, AirAsia tickets, and we were ready to go tomorrow morning. But that evening, 
the evening before we were about to fly, when we're all packed and all excited, ready to go and do the Tony Fernandez podcast, we get the call. We get the call from his comms people and Tony can't do it. Tony can't do it because he's got to go and meet the Prime Minister of Malaysia. So we were pretty deflated. And then it happens again. Are you ready? You ready to go? We've got a time for you. He's actually going to come and do it in your studio in Singapore. So we're all excited. We've cancelled everything for the day. We're ready to do the podcast. And it gets rescheduled. Then I pitched the comms guy. We'll do the podcast in his private jet. Didn't work. And eventually, I think six or seven months later, we actually get the clearance. It's going to happen. We're doing it on Thursday. We're ready to fly. We've booked the flights, got the clearance. We've got the time. We're going. Didn't get a message in the evening before. Whew. Cleared first base. We're now at the airport in the morning, checking into AirAsia, ready to fly the first flight to Kuala Lumpur to do the Tony Fernandez interview. We haven't had any messages, so no news is good news. We've landed at KL. We've got all our stuff. It all arrived with us. We're ready to go. And we're heading to AirAsia HQ to meet Tony and to do the podcast. Everything so far, so good. We're now in the conference room. We're setting up all the podcast gear. We've met the communications people. We've met the PA. We've met the comms, the head of PR, everything. It's all good to go. And we're setting up the microphones. We're setting up the cameras. We're setting up the computers. And we're just waiting to go. 12.30, the allotted time. It's quarter to 12. Somebody comes running into the room. And it's a panic. Somebody comes running into the room and they say, Tony's PA hasn't been told about this podcast. And I'm just thinking, oh my God, this is going to be, right at the last minute, a reschedule. And then the comms person turns around and says, it's happening, but he's coming down right now. So we all jump to action. We're well trained. We've done over 500 podcasts at this stage. So we know our stuff. So we're just ready to go. 12 o'clock, Tony walks into the room, shake hands. Haven't seen you for about six or seven months. How's it going? All good. He's very relaxed as usual. Comes down in his slacks. No suit and tie, just a t-shirt. Very casual. Sit down, get to business. He says, I've just got one request. And I knew what it was going to be. I knew what Tony was going to say to me. And he was going to say, look, there's been a scheduled clash. I'm on a flight in 15 minutes. I can only do this 10 minutes. And I knew he was going to say that. And I thought, Tony, I'm going to strangle you now. We got all the way here. And you're going to tell me this ain't going to happen. 10 minutes ain't enough. He said, I've got one request. I said, sure, what is it? He said, I want to start a podcast business. Wait a minute. Did Tony Fernandez just say he wanted to start a podcast business? Did I hear that right? He didn't say, I want to start a podcast. He said, I wanted to start a podcast business. And that sort of started everything. In the sense that that was the validation that we needed that people who are leading the change of business here in Asia understood how they were going to achieve digital transformation. They weren't going to do it by creating podcast content and pushing it through their social media channel. They were going to create their own content and use that to help transform the company. This wasn't about creating podcasts, but this was about digital transformation and the evolution of business. You see, as we found out in this podcast, podcasts are a powerful tool to create change. This isn't about social media. This is about the evolution of business.